What is the best solo class in ESO? That's what we're going to talk about today. As we enter 2023 and we're coming off quite a turbulent year for ESO's balancing. 2022 is a year that brought with it some of the most contentious changes to the game to date. We've seen the developers push for more hybrid setups, allowing every build to dip into both Magicka and Stamina abilities. On the bright side, this has made the divide between Mag and Stam builds smaller than we've ever seen it. They perform very similar to one another now because they are using largely the same abilities, the same passives, and the same gear. It's not uncommon to see Magicka builds using daggers and two-handed swords, just like Stamina builds. It's been a wild ride. Over the last year, we've seen almost every class get hit with massive nerfs and some buffs. Some have definitely fared better than others though. Just in case you don't know me, I've got hundreds of videos in ESO and thousands of hours in the game, completed every ounce of content it has to offer. I know this game inside and out, which means that this tier list is just the opinion of one person, but an incredibly well-informed person. If you disagree with anything I say, don't sweat it. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback, and maybe I'll consider it in the next tier list. As always, I'd like to remind you that every one of these classes is capable of doing all content in the game. The worst are never far from the best, and this is especially true for solo content. So don't let this list be the end-all be-all deciding factor for which class you choose. Choose the class that excites you because Zoss will absolutely shuffle the deck again. As always, I'll link the builds in the description below so that you can try them out yourself. I'm going to rank these from B- to S tier. As usual, all of these classes are feeling great, but there are definitely some that are feeling better than others. So let's begin. First up, the Stamina Sorcerer, which has always been a bit of an oxymoron in ESO. A Sorcerer is by its very nature a Mage or a Magical based class, so then to turn it into a Stamina class focused on melee weapon abilities always seemed to run counter to its very existence. Last year was an interesting year for the Stamina Sorcerer as its crystal weapon was buffed to interstellar heights, shooting it up past the highest parsers in ESO for a patch, but as quickly as the Stam Sork was buffed, it was nerfed again. And just like that, the reason anyone had to choose the Stam Sork over the Mag Sork was gone. You can still choose to use Crystal Weapon as your spammable, and it still feels as awful as it always has, but now without the benefit of doing great damage in the process. You'll probably want to spring for a weapon spammable on this class instead. What the Stam Sork does have going for it is that few classes feel as tanky as the Stamina Sorcerer when it's put together right. You end up being able to face tank your way through just about any fight, oftentimes standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the adversary until it kills over dead. Your ability, known as Hurricane, is great for damage and proccing your critical surge, as well as providing tankiness by providing a buff called Major Resolve that increases your resistances by 6,000. The worst part about the Stam Sark is you'll have to seek out a source of Major Breach, as the Sorcerer somehow doesn't have one in its kit, which means you'll have to do quite a bit of PvP to deck this class out for solo content. And for all of these reasons, we'll rate the Stamina Sorcerer at a B-. Next up, the Magicka Nightblade. But first, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, Dragon Raha. Dragon Raha's third anniversary is here. Dragon Raha is an MMORPG with a next generation open world that features cyberpunk aesthetics that players are sure to love. During the third anniversary period, players who return to the game can receive loads of diamonds, limited time anniversary outfits, cool new motors, a new avatar, and an avatar frame. There is also a limited time return of exquisite outfits at a very low, low discount. Come back to Dragon Raha during this event to receive not only a ton of diamonds, but also the Ghost Sugar outfit and the Secura Pupil and Phantom Lord motors. A 13th new class has been added. It's a Shadow Fencer and is available now. Shadow Fencers use the foil as a weapon, but the shadow that moves with the sword is much more impressive. It can not only deal huge damage, but also crowd control your enemies. Log into the game to experience the new Shadow Fencer class right now. Also, the open world is expanding again. A new map is being added called Cambridge, and it features a brand new story in a dazzling dynamic aura. Download Dragon Raha for free right now by clicking the link in the description below. Thanks for listening and let's get back to the video. In some ways, the Magic of Nightblade is incredibly simple to play. You can always play the Magblade poorly and still do an excellent job of staying alive, largely due to the fact that your spammable Swallow Soul is also healing you every time you use it. On top of that, this spammable is a ranged ability, so you can kite around your enemies and drop them, or you can just look in their direction and delete them. The choice is yours. Nightblades in general are fantastic for soloing because of their ease of access to life leeching abilities that bring life back in. The spammable we just discussed being one of many. They also have fantastic ult regen, allowing them to rapidly reuse their ult compared to other classes. This year, the Magblades were on the receiving end of a few nerfs, bringing their damage ceiling down a bit. 
They flew really close to the sun for a long time, so it wasn't really unexpected. If not for how insanely well the remaining classes are performing in solo content right now, I'd put the Magblade higher. For this reason, I'm going to put the Magblade at an A-. Next up, we have the Stamina Templar. The Stamina Templar used to be the king of simplicity. You used to be able to push out 100,000 DPS parse with a few buttons. Well, that's changed now. The Stamina Templar is still very much able to put out a ton of damage, but it's no longer happening with one of the simplest rotations in the game. It plays much more like the rest of the classes now. The Stamina Templar is in an awkward position now that the Mag and Stam variants of the class feel so similar to one another. It's really hard to think of a lot of reasons to solo on the Stamina Templar over the Magicka Templar. They use the same weapons and many of the same skills. Therefore, they look almost identical in practice, but the Stamina Templar is jabbing away with a channeled spammable that leaves it open to attacks that it can't block without interrupting its damage. Now, the Magicka Templar has the same problem, but its version of the same ability provides a massive life-leeching heal every time it's used. On the bright side, the class has fantastic mobility, and as mentioned, performs great in group content. It also puts out some insane damage in solo content and has some great AoE damage. The Magicka Templar became a beast, and it did so while wearing the gear that made the Stamina Templar great, and so Zoss nerfed that gear, leaving the Stamina Templar floundering a bit. It's no longer the king of simplicity, and while it puts out great damage, I feel like it lost what made it unique before, and in exchange it was given nothing. For these reasons, we'll give the Stamina Templar an A-. Next up we have the Stamina Warden. The Stamina Warden was the highest parsing class in ESO, for a moment, but that's long gone now. Again, like the Necro, the Warden is a DLC class which resulted in it having a really well-rounded kit with some really fun utility abilities. It's got Bird of Prey which increases your move speed by 30% temporarily, while also permanently buffing your damage. It's got a giant bear that follows you around doing way more damage than you'd ever guess. And now with the hybridization of the game, the Stamina Warden can use the Magicka version of the class Semi-Spammable, which is giving it access to Major and Minor Breach. This is huge for solo content and has been a welcome change for the Warden. The Stamina Warden puts out insane amounts of AoE damage, has a very nature-y flair to it, and has lots of fun utility abilities. Thanks to passive access to minor toughness and a great kit, the Stamina Warden can be insanely tough to kill. And for these reasons, we'll put the Stamina Warden at an A. Next up, we have the Stamina Necromancer. Previously, I'd been running spammables like Brawler and Carve to great effect on the Stamina characters that had less than amazing class spammables. In a well-intended effort to buff class identity, Zoss turned Carve into a dot and then the buff the Necro Scythe to take its place. So far, for the Necro at least, losing Carve as a spammable didn't feel that bad in solo content as we were able to pivot to the Scythe. The Scythe heals with every swing, which is great for survivability in solo content, especially if you don't have a Ring of Pell order yet. This change has made the class a lot easier to pick up and play for new players, and since the Scythes cost so much less to spam, it's been great improvement for a Necro sustain. Necromancers have a lot of built-in survivability and tons of utility in their abilities. Necromancers are also kings of AoE damage thanks to the fact that their number one damage ability, Blast Bones, hits like a truck and does so in AoE fashion. For these reasons, we'll put the Necromancer at an A. Next up, we have the Magicka Dragonite. The Magicka Dragonite is on fire right now, literally and figuratively. It's in such a great spot for a group content, but it feels a bit squishier than in years past in solo content. Right now, groups are filled with Magicka Dragonites, and they are an absolute blast of play. The Ring of Pell Order does a lot to make up for the deficiencies of this class's self-heals. It also gets to use dual-wield daggers for extra crit chance with no downside, as it's already going to be a melee class anyway, thanks to its whip spammable. Built-in sources of damage mitigation, built-in major breach, incredibly powerful dots, this class is easy to set up and fun to play. Once you get all of your buffs and dots ticking, you're nearly unkillable when in combination with the Ring of Pell Order. For these reasons, we'll give the Magicka Dragonite an A. Next up, we have the Magicka Sorcerer. The Magicka Sorcerer always finds itself high up on these lists, no matter who makes them, due to some built-in healing from Critical Surge and pets that will kill things for you when you don't feel like doing the killing yourself. It has easy access to major resolve for damage mitigation, it has powerful and cost-effective spammables, and easy access to life leech through critical surge. Even the new players will find themselves performing fairly well on this class, making it easy to slide towards the top of the list. Your pets will do a lot of the work for you, but they are a double-edged sword as their AI will sometimes let you down. My biggest grievance with the pets is that they also have to be double barred, requiring the two pets to take up four of your ten slots, nearly half. Again, this is a double-edged sword, as they are low maintenance 
and greatly simplify your rotation as many of your skills are duplicates. Still, the Magicka Sorcerer is easy to play, does fantastic damage, and has great survivability. And for those reasons, the Magicka Sorcerer will be the first class on this list to receive the coveted S tier rating. Next up, the Magicka Necromancer. The next class on this list has been towards the top of the list for as long as I've been making these lists. It does so much AoE damage with its class abilities while also using the same abilities to provide major breach, damage mitigation, and self-healing. The Magic and Necromancer just hits so hard, and it's now wearing largely the same weapons and armor as the Stamina Necromancer, making the two feel more similar than ever before. As a Necromancer, you will specialize in applying dots, lots and lots of dots. In fact, in group content, sometimes you'll replace your spammable with yet another dot. Depending on your taste, this could be a good or a bad thing, but it does result in the Necromancer Necromancer having one of the most difficult rotations in the game. Unfortunately for the Necromancer, it's about to be the middle child in ESO. The Arcanist is upon us, and that means the Arcanist is going to be Zoss's new favorite class. As a result, the Necro is already being hit with nerfs that are pushing its single target damage output toward the bottom of the pack. Magic and Necromancers also lack an execute, leaving the end of fights feeling a lot like the beginning of them, whereas other classes seem to excel in the end of fights when fights are most dangerous. Despite the nerfs, the Necro is still a DLC class, and you can feel that both in the amazing utility of its abilities and the wonderful ways you can combine them to create something great. Between Blast Bones and all of the dots you put down, the damage really ramps up as the battles go on, making the Necro a blast to play. Get it? Because Blast Bones... Sorry, uh, I'll never not make that joke. <laughs> uh -oh. For these reasons, the Necromancer will be given the rank of S tier. Next up, the Stamina Nightblade. The first double S tier class is going to go to the Stamina Nightblade. This class has so much built-in self-healing, so much built-in damage mitigation, and gains so much free crit chance and crit damage through its class passives that it hits like a truck while staying safe. Like the Magicka Nightblade, its damage ceiling was impacted by the changes to crit last year. But with its spammable surprise attack being buffed this year, it's back in business. Dual wield just feels so right on the Nightblade, so it fits really well in the dual wield meta happening at the moment unlike some of the Magicka classes on this list. Plus, it allows for even more crit chance. Our spammable of all things provides major resolve, which increases our resistances by 6,000, making us massively tanky. Some of our abilities cost Magicka instead of stamina, which works out great for our sustain. Multiple abilities on this build bring back health, and then on top of that, you can use Ring of the Pell Order just to further abuse these poor bosses lurking throughout Tamriel. Tons of life leech, great passives, a newly enhanced spammable, and a really inexpensive ultimate make the Stamina Nightblade a fantastic solo class. For these reasons, the Stamina Nightblade will be ranked at double S tier. Next up, the Magicka Warden. This is the most improved solo class in the game right now, by far. Formerly, this class was sitting at the absolute bottom of the list. Zoss buffed it once before, but it just wasn't enough. They buffed it again, and now it feels amazing. And it's well-deserved, because the Magicka Warden had been on the bottom for a long time. Now, thanks to buffs to its frost damage and chill effects, the Magicka Warden is an absolutely devastating AoE damage dealer. On top of that, its self-heal now does incredible damage to enemies while healing yourself and freezing everyone around you. It's a fantastically fun skill to use, and I'm glad to see that it's working as a damage ability now. This DLC class received more love from Zoss than any other over the last couple of patches, and now we are seeing it at times parsing higher than any other class. Not only that, it's got great AoE damage, great self-healing, and it's just good fun. For this reason, the Magicka Warden has been brought all the way up to double S tier. Next up, we have the Stamina Dragonite. The Stamina Dragonite has been through a lot in the last year and a half. It was the worst class in the game, then it was buffed high into the sky before being nerfed again. But even after these nerfs, the Stamina Dragonite just seems to shine in solo content in ESO. The Dragonite is the number one tank in the game, and a lot of things that make it a great tank translate perfectly into turning it into a fantastic solo class. The long form dots the class brings pair great with the Ring of the Pell Order, as every one of them is basically turned into a heal over time effect by the Ring of the Pell Order. It has great damage as well as unrivaled damage mitigation. It's easy to play and easy to build. If you want to stand toe to toe with giant bosses and pummel them down with a steel weapon and some poison and fire dots, then the Stamina Dragonite is the choice for you. For these reasons, the Stamina Dragonite continues to be ranked at double S tier.
tier for solo content. Next up, we have the Magicka Templar. This class has received some much needed buffs and then some nerfs. The Magicka Templar is the easiest solo class in the game right now. Despite its nerfs, Sweeping Strikes is bringing back a ton of damage you deal as health. It's amazing. The Magicka Templar also has one of the coolest executes in the game, often referred to in the community as the Jesus Beam. Oh, and this beautiful execute ability, yeah, it also returns life when you use it. The Magplar did lose a little tankiness last year as a result of the nerf to its runes, so be careful taking too much damage at once. Hybridization of the game allowed the Magplar to take the Stamplar's gear and outshine it. I'll put a link to the build in the description below in case you want to try the Magplar for yourself, but know this, the Magicka Templar feels amazing, so if you've ever wanted to try this class out, now is the time. It's fun, it looks good, and it's powerful. And in short, it's still the single best solo class in the game, it's the easiest one to pick up for new and returning players, and despite doing a little less damage than it used to, it's still fantastic in group content. For these reasons, we'll give the Magicka Templar a double S tier rating. Finally, let's talk about what will be the number one class in ESO, the Arcanist. This class isn't out yet, but I'm going to confidently assume this class is going to be overpowered when it enters ESO. It will be the strongest class in the game without question. That's typically what every MMO does when they add a new class, and I doubt ESO will be the lone exception here. Given how each DLC class seems to have had more and more thought put into its kit, I have high hopes for the Arcanist class and fully expect it to be quite, quite powerful. The Arcanist will have a great, versatile kit, some incredibly fun abilities, and will no doubt be dishing out more damage than any other class in the game. From its teleporter to its Kamehameha Blast, it's looking like this class is going to be a ton of fun in all types of content, but especially for all things solo. So for the first time ever, I'm going to give a class the rating of triple S tier. It's just going to be the best class in the game. It's going to be the best solo class in the game. It's just going to be that good when it launches with Necrom. In conclusion, Zoss is always balancing the game, sometimes in obvious ways and sometimes in less obvious ways. And it's fun to go through these builds and see how strong we can make them from patch to patch. I'll add that all of these builds can trifecta Vodestron Hollows and Maelstrom Arena, and all of them can do all content in the game. Every single one of these can solo all the world bosses and even solo dungeons, and of course they can all do every quest. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, don't let this tier list decide your class for you. Pick the one that looks awesome to you. No matter which class you choose, it's going to be capable of all content in the game. That's all from me on this topic until the next patch where we reevaluate all the classes and give them all a report card all over again. Be sure to check out the links in the description down below to all of the build guides that I have created and tested this patch for you. I put a lot of work into these guides. As you can see on the screen right now, they come with everything you need to know about the build, like the gear you need to equip and where that gear comes from and the skills you need to equip and where the skills come from and the champion points you need to equip. It's got everything. If you're still here, hopefully you enjoyed the video. So please consider a like and subscribe so that you will be alerted to more Elder Scrolls content. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave a comment down below Hello. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I want to give a massive thank you to my YouTube members for going above and beyond to support the channel. To find out how to become a YouTube member for access to an exclusive Discord channel, behind the scenes footage, and emotes and more, click the join button down below. If you ever want to hang out with someone else who loves MMOs, swing by my stream over at twitch.tv slash lucky ghost. And don't forget to check out the builds and more linked in the description. Now one last thing, if you're still not sure what to do next, check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now.